I really wish I was being dramatic. Yeah. Truly, I have never felt so bad after a workout. <laughs> My life. I think boogers just flew out of my nose. We'll catch that later on. Stop. I might actually shed a tear. Yeah. If that was insane. <laughs> 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 Isn't that pretty crazy? So that's quick and dirty. Yeah. That's the definition. Oh, my head. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you. Okay, I'm ready. Tell me when to start. Okay, you can read it now. Should I give an intro? <laughs> well, what did we do? <laughs> We're so not in the mood. <laughs> no, we've got this. Okay. Remember? I could use your high from earlier. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I can't wait to debrief this, actually. So okay. You're cut off because you yeah, screwed up the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so today we did anaerobic lactic endurance, also known as quick death. Mm-hmm. I coined that term, TM. Um, so what is anaerobic lactic system? Oh. Well, it's also called the creatine phosphate system or the ATP CP system. It deals primarily with the quick supply of ATP for fast and powerful movements. Because it relies primarily on the little ATP that is already present in the muscles, supplies run out fairly quickly, and fast and powerful movement drops off after just a few seconds. You can test this with a simple all-out sprint. Go outside, sprint down the street at full speed, and note how your movement slows after 5 to 8 seconds. This is the best part. Even the fastest in the world will slow down in the final meters of the 100-meter sprint. How was that? I'm a performer. Good job. Thank you. So we just did, well, let's talk about what the actual workout was. Mm -hmm. So the anaerobic alactic endurance workout that we did was 20 seconds on the assault bike all out. It's probably like a 90 to 95% effort. And I'll explain why it's not 100% in a second. Um, And then rest four minutes. And we did that six times. So realistically, to go after this specific energy system being endurance, um, The reason it's not 100% is anaerobic alactic power, which is usually about 0 to 10 seconds, that's more like 100% because as as you read on there, the last like whatever 10 meters of a 100 meter dash, people usually fall off. Yeah. So same thing here with 20 seconds, and we can speak to this, the last five seconds, we're kind of dead. That's true. Right? So anaerobic alactic power, which is like a 10 second sprint, um, that's all out max. This would be like 90 to 95. And then for the rest, to get the most out of it, we should have rested a little bit more. Um, but Coach Anna <laughs> was like, oh, no, we just need like two minutes rest. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. Let's do at least four. So um, we probably could have done with like five minutes rest. Yeah. Like if I was programming this for a client, I would have done five minutes rest. Oh, good. So we were the guinea pigs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So how did that feel? Oh, my goodness. I have so much to say. And so little <laughs> left in me. <laughs> I really wish I was being dramatic. Yeah. Truly, I have never felt so bad after a workout <laughs> in my entire life. I think boogers just flew out of my nose. We'll catch that later on. Stop. I might actually shed a tear. Yeah. If that was insane. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this is on camera. What's the matter? just a lot yeah yeah <laughs> it's just a lot i think i just <laughs> <laughs> do i cut this out or do i keep no, this in i don't know it's one of those moments where do you laugh or cry is it like one of these things where you're like i don't even know what's going on with my body so should we start from the beginning do you want to restart no i just mean like i'm going to tell the story from start to finish <laughs> of how this happened yeah how we enough. got here how did so, i get to that little breakdown am i going to include this breakdown You can. Yeah? We said we were doing the real deal. I think people (laughs) deserve to know how I feel right now. I'm so confused because the emotions, I didn't know if this was serious. This is live TV now. (laughs) This is live TV. Okay, yeah, take us through it. So this morning. Talk us through what just happened. Yeah. 
I think I'm going to start from the very beginning. Sure. The very beginning started with me waking up at 6.30, desperately needing water because I drank a <laughs> bottle of wine last <laughs> night. Um, so that was my own fault. And that speaks to lifestyle. Kelsey sent me a text la- yesterday afternoon, said, want to grab wine tonight? I knew what was on deck for today. But I made a choice, and I had to live with the consequences. So we went. It was lovely, whatever, but I don't drink very often, (laughs) especially a full bottle of wine. So when I do, it hurts. Anyway, I wake up, and I'm like, Isaac and I are doing this today. I don't know what we're doing. And I knew we couldn't do the CrossFit workout anymore because of my scheduling. So sorry, these are irrelevant details. (laughs) But (laughs) but essentially – you, we looked for a little bit this morning when I was texting you, it was me saying, okay, I'm up for the day. I'm committed to this. And we looked at some options and then you presented this to me. And I did a quick Google of which I just read you what I read. <clears throat> I put my big girl pants on and I showed up. Um, so I wasn't my best coming in here, but I faked it. You did fake it pretty good. <laughs> And you can only fake it for so long <laughs> until you have a moment. You faked it all the way until <laughs> twenty two two minutes ago. That was amazing. Yeah. And I remember, like, so, n- like, I'm, I'm, I'm really not trying to scare people away from this type of workout. But no. to me, what's so powerful about it is, I don't know, it, I think maybe a little bit with you, definitely with Anna upstairs, is we're so preconditioned to think the longer the workout is, the more difficult it's going to be. So when you see 20 seconds of work, like realistically, we literally did two minutes of work today and we rested for a total of like, whatever, 28 minutes. <laughs> There's a single beat, that same <laughs> beat of sweat from last week, same spot. Um, but like, even in those two minutes, it's like enough to destroy you. Like It was so hard. I had a massive headache after the first one. Like, let's, let's talk through the stages. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Jess comes in. She's like, yeah, I am ready, willing to go. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to like shit on your parade, but I'm gonna be honest. I've done a lot of workouts, and for some reason, this is the only one that ever makes me feel sick. And I know that like you went out last night. Like, is this something you want to do? You're like, this is gonna be so much fun. Woo. I made that bed. I know. So yeah, so I'm gonna lie in it. I'm so proud of you. Thank I would have been like, no friggin' way. Let's no. go on a long walk today. If it's in my calendar, it's happening. You killed it. And so. I came in and definitely overcompensating for how I felt. Sure. Brought my positive attitude, and that was the only thing that I could cling to the whole time. There's video footage of me telling myself I'm okay. Yeah. She because to- I wasn't. You, she even <laughs> told us a whole story about going to Switzerland that she made up. She was yeah. taking us through a tour of Switzerland. I beautiful. needed the mental game today more so, than I've ever needed in a workout before. So let's talk about that first set yeah so we did the first set yep it's 20 seconds 20 seconds first aggressive movement of the day and how'd it go it was good it was like okay this is i can do this Mm -hmm. obviously it's gonna feel worse the more intervals because we do interval training yeah but i didn't and you told me i think that's the worst part is that you straight up told me exactly what was going to happen and then it played out <laughs> exactly what did like I say? that. What did I say? Isaac says, the first one, you're going to feel good. The second one, you'll probably feel good too. Third one, you might feel good as well on that one. By the fourth one, it's going to hurt. And that was when it, I'm glad we captured this so that we you can actually see how bad the fourth one hit. Because I think we all just fell on the floor after yeah. that one. Yeah. And I, again, I wish we were being dramatic. I know. I know. <laughs> it keeps yeah. coming down. And it, <laughs> do you just feel it? You're like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And this is, you know, there's certain workouts where if you are, if you have an older training age, meaning that, you know, you've been working out for a longer, a longer period of time, you'll get more out of it. And that is definitely the anaerobic, a lactic energy system, right? Like if you are brand new to fitness and you do a 10 spe- second sprint or a 20 second sprint, a lot of the times you might not really have a good understanding of what a max effort is. Yeah. Whereas when you've been doing this for a little bit and you know what like 100% output on the assault bike feels like, it's going to hit you a little bit different. And I know Anna, you know, I know Anna was kind of talking about this as well, 
when she first joined movement strength she did it a few times and she's like yeah i thought i did it but like mm. she didn't really because she just didn't really understand what True. max meant right yeah. whereas today she's like i'm not even being dramatic just kind of what we're saying mm -hmm. and she's like that was probably one of the worst workouts i've ever done yeah i can't believe that was the sentiment from all three of us yeah and i knew it would hurt a because i didn't set myself up for success today but b because it is what it is <laughs> and i i was thinking you know okay well this is a good baseline for me <laughs> didn't come in at my best i wonder what i could do if i actually rested drank lots of water came in and was ready to go there's no way i'm doing that until i have blacked this memory out sorry <laughs> blacked this memory out and then i can maybe revisit this one <laughs> but it, it's funny right and like i'll just say it like i i did hydrate well yesterday <laughs> I prepared myself Good mentally for kind of for what's because this is this was always in my back pocket. Like I always knew if we couldn't do something, yeah. I'm going to throw this one in there because it's something that's different. Not a lot of people know about or really yeah. understand. So like mentally in my head, I always had the thought of like this might be coming. And even still, I, I don't know what it is, but it like just destroys me. So this is important. I just realized because I think I'm going to listen to you more. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because you were so right about this, that when you tell me, hey, Jess, running a half marathon without really training for it is not a good idea. Oh, Now yes. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> now I know because I've, you know, you do big workouts and I would say typically I feel okay even after the hardest workout, 20 minutes max afterwards. You know, that's when you're fully kind of recovered. I feel like garbage yeah. right now, yeah. still. So I don't know. I think it was Janelle, one of our members, Janelle, I was talking to. And this was like a few months back. We were doing every week. We would pick a workout and we'd do a workout together. So they were usually longer endurance based, like 15 to 30 minutes. And one of them was um, three rounds. I think it was a... 500 meter row, um, 30 cal assault bike, and then a 600 meter run, something like that. And I would do that all day. Like, not to say I can do it all day, but like that. Flex. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> what, what? Uh, <laughs> but um, to me, this, what we did is stuff like, this isn't a good energy system for me to train. So even like when it's, um, there's like a CrossFit workout called Fran, which is mm -hmm. 21, 15, nine, and it's barbell thrusters and pull-ups. And it's meant to be done, you know, under a five minute window, ideally, right? So there's certain workouts we do that we want people to finish it in a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So there could be a workout that I write and it might take you 15 minutes and it's like, okay, you actually didn't get what I intended you to get out of that workout. That's why a lot of the times we'll have like a five minute time cap where people are like, well, why I want to finish the workout? It's like, no, 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 because we want you to make sure you're getting the right stimulus from it. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the right stimulus. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I don't know why yeah. this single bead of just sweat Did you get just, that checked out? just on my don't, right don't, armpit. Don't, don't, don't worry about Whenever we work it. hard, it's good. It shows up. It's good. We should name it. We should name it. <laughs> well, we'll ask our viewers <laughs> to name it. <laughs> Is that gross that I'm talking about the single bead of sweat? I talked about farting last week. That's so true. I think we we're past that point. So I like what you're saying. Um, I like that at the beginning you explained what this is good for. Mm, yeah, that was earlier today. Yeah. So, so hockey players, that's what I'm thinking because you're on in really short shifts and you have to go all out. Yes. So, so this makes sense for that. Yeah. So a lot of power-based sports, right? Yeah. So sprinting, anything with jumping, um, hockey is a good one. Football is a good one. Anything with like explosive power. Mm -hmm. So when we think of different athletes, different athletes are going to train in different ways. They're going to be more sport specific in a sense, right? So if you're um, at like an athletic training facility and you're training for hockey, you're going to see a lot more of this style of training, more of like, I don't want to call it high intensity interval training, um, but more hit style training. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're a marathon runner, um, if you play soccer, you're probably not going to see too much of this. You're going to see more of like that 10 to 20 minute type workout put. 
Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's important to, to, to think of like what your big goal is, what you're training for. This is why we don't do too much of this in the gym right now is like realistically for the majority of our members, this is more to show people like humble people like, Hey, fitness has so many different aspects, respect the time, know what full out effort means. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't necessarily always have a place. Yeah. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the hockey football style training or the marathon soccer training? I'm little. <laughs> so anything power no, based? Not. Yeah, sorry. I'm, you're yoked. I'm yoked. <laughs> I'm strong. Yeah. Uh, anything power based definitely isn't isn't my isn't my wheelhouse. Why? In terms of strength things like Olympic weightlifting, yeah. that's you know that's my background. That stuff I enjoy. But when it's like, hey, hop on an assault bike or hop on a rower, I look at those machines as being like, those are going to benefit the tall person, um, the heavier person, whereas someone who's lighter and shorter like myself, I wasn't built for those machines. Hmm. And that's an important thing about this energy system as well, um, is when we think of the best way to test a lactic power and a lactic endurance, you need to utilize a machine um, that's... The, I guess the best way to put it would be like it's, it's more cyclical. So mm -hmm. if you think of um, an assault bike, you're using your arms and your legs and you're moving quickly, right? So not all movements are going to give you the same stimulus. If you do 20 seconds of push-ups, you're not going to get the same thing, no. right? If you do 20 seconds of air squats, you're not going to get the same thing. So you need to make sure that when you're hitting these different energy systems, you're using a tool that's actually going to allow you to express those movements the most. Do you think it's best to do a mix in your life Absolutely. or do you think it's better to stick in your lane for longevity's sake? What is this going to do to me this week yeah. kind of thing? Like, is it, is it harmful for someone to be mixing it up all the time? Do you no, think? no, I okay. don't think so. So I know coach will, yeah. who like I just view as like the fitness guru. I, don't yeah. know, I just very much respect <laughs> Will when it comes the to temple. all things fitness, right? Yeah. Um, and his big thing is, you know, to be a specialist isn't extremely healthy. Mm -hmm. So if you think of people who only run marathons, they're not necessarily always healthy. We define health as, you know, the absence of disease or illness or injury. If you think of people who purely train for hockey like if they were only training for hockey uh you know 12 months out of the year and like that was their main goal there's probably gonna be a lot of injuries that come same from yeah. weightlifting same from bodybuilding so that's why we're big fans of strength and conditioning in a broader sense hmm. is it's introducing you to a lot of different styles of training yeah. and it's not like just one wins over everything so although sometimes our members have uh, an issue understanding this people love just getting a sweaty workout that's not always the best thing for your body. Like mm -hmm. sometimes your body needs to just do a weightlifting workout or Pilates or Pilates yeah. or yoga, right? Like I think it's Correct. really important to mix it up. And that's what I love about this whole sweaty pursuits um, series is like, it's cool to go out and try different things of fitness. That's why I am fit. So I can go for a hike. Yep. I can try skiing. I can do Pilates. I can do all these different things. That is the really beneficial part. I think of, choosing to prioritize health and fitness in your life is it unlimits you to mm -hmm. opportunities and activities and stuff. And I, when I think about what are my long-term goals, I think about my grandma a lot, actually. She's amazing. Love you, grandma. Um, I don't think she would be listening to this, but maybe I'll send it to her. <laughs> um, she is close to 90 now and traveled the world and was working out, she lived in Windsor, she was working out at a gym up until COVID happened. Really? Yeah, she would drive across the city of Windsor because she loved her community That's amazing. at her gym and she'd go and work out. And she is so healthy and so active and I think a lot of her motivator was that she loves to travel. And so in order to be mobile, to go to different places, you need to sustain a level of health and fitness because your body naturally deteriorates over For time sure. and it's a slippery slope too. You know, you stop, you, you need to be consistent throughout your life and you see that with older folks and unfortunately with COVID, I think a lot of 
older people who were living very healthy lifestyles had a break from that and it was detrimental as a result. Yeah. So, um, I just, I like that she's kind of a role model in my life for how I would like to continue to lead my life and what my value proposition to myself is of longevity. See, that's amazing. So, and I mean, you kind of talked about this a few podcasts back when you were talking about sustainability is really what your goal is this Mm -hmm. year. So when you think of what your goal is long-term with fitness, would it really just be when you are 90, when you are 95, you can move without pain? Yeah. And what was really cool, kind of the thing that I was thinking of when um, I thought about my grandma just now is about 10 years ago, my grandma propositioned going heli hiking with me. What is? So there's heli skiing where you take a helicopter up. It's my parents, my mom worked for a heli ski company, so they got to do a lot of it. It's pretty bougie activity. <laughs> That's good. So it sounds pretty bougie. <laughs> Very high price point. Um, but they got to go do it for free. So the helicopter takes you up and you're in essentially the back country skiing some of the most amazing wow. terrain. Heli hiking's the same where they take you so you don't have to trek in 200 kilometers to these really remote areas. It takes you, drops you off. There's lodges in the back country too where you stay and everything. Um, and she kind of propositioned that to me. How many years ago was this? Probably like 10. So she would have been 80. Yeah. And oh I remember gosh. my mom saying, I don't know if this is a good idea, you know, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that she legitimately put that on the table. That's amazing. Is so amazing. So that's my goal. Do you call, <laughs> do you call her grandma or is it like Nana? No, grandma. Okay, grandma. Yeah. Um, and she's the most kind, wonderful human I've ever known. See, and this is <laughs> this is where it's like, unfortunately, I think it's like a time and a place for people. When you're, and I think you're just a, you're unique in this sense. When you're in university, um, when you're in high school, even when like you graduate university, I don't think people really want to think about the long term of like, yeah, I just want to move when I'm ninety. They're like. I want to have a big dump truck in the back. <laughs> it's garbage day. <laughs> right? That's what like, Nicole said the other sure. day. Sure. <laughs> I want to I want to be jacked. I want to have all these things, yeah. right? And like to get those things, you're you're potentially, you know, you're you're, you're potentially harming yourself in the future, right? Yeah. So, um even for myself, like my physique, my body fat percentage, the things I train for, in the back of my head, I know that this isn't necessarily ideal. Mm-hmm. Um Once again, Will talks about this all the time, and this is why he's so big on, like, this concept of human movement, doing, like, cars or controlled articulate rotations, um, little things of, like, when you're sitting down, being able to stand up without using your hands. Like, he has this whole goal. I don't think I could do that right now. (laughs) I don't think so either. Uh, He has this whole goal of just being able to move. (laughs) He has this whole goal of just being able to move (laughs) when he's older, right? Um, and I just, I don't think that's the case for a lot of people our age. Yeah. And I think to my point earlier about Michelle Obama. (laughs) Yeah. You want Michelle Obama arms. Yeah. I don't know, but I actually don't want Michelle Obama arms particularly. I want Michelle Obama lifestyle Mm. because when I think about why she's a role model to me in terms of, well, a lot of things, but health and fitness, it's because she prioritizes longevity Mm. and the way that she talks about healthy or health and fitness in my opinion is in a really healthy and productive way not in a I need to look a certain way fit into a certain body style that's in trend right now Um, and that was her big initiative when she was in the White House was getting kids healthy in schools and active and moving. What is her thing with fitness? Because I don't know really anything about it. Yeah, so essentially, this is my understanding of it, and welcome to be kind of wrong and corrected, but my understanding is that um, as a first person, I'm going to say, in the White House, uh, you have the opportunity to kind of pick what initiatives you want to focus on during that term. And so when Michelle Obama came into office... Her big thing was ground up fitness Mm. and health. So how do we get processed foods out of the school system? How do we promote movement? Because obesity is a really big problem and it's causing our entire population a lot of 
issues and she had worked in a hospital in Chicago and had seen the impact that lack of focus on healthy lifestyles has on the overall system and p- the population. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool. She And she talks about it in her book how planting a garden at the White House isn't this crazy feat, but it was more symbolic that, hey, we can grow our own food. Let's make this fun. Let's bring kids in and show them yeah. a different um, way of looking at life. That's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. that's why I think of her when I think of where I would like to be with health and fitness and just the way that she promotes it with her kids and everything too see that's great i love that thanks and it goes back to this whole like you know sometimes we need to give people what they want in order to actually give them what they truly need Mm -hmm. and i think of a lot of our members who were maybe attracted to our gym for one reason but through education and just exposure to other people in our community really learned that like oh wow okay there's like the grass is greener on the other side over here right yeah so it's cool I do want to talk a little bit more about this. Yeah, and then I, I know you I have a meeting soon, so I'm just trying to... Okay, good. I'm being your, secu- your security, your nice. secretary here. Yeah, your secretary. That's great. Um, okay. So this was humbling. <laughs> <laughs> I think I feel better now that we've just been chatting, but you I... You seem yourself now. I think I'm are you Are you okay? From the beginning, you've seen the roller coaster. This, it's been amazing. For, I'm just sitting here <laughs> like this watching. I cannot believe... <laughs> The beginning of this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> can I, I can keep that in. You can absolutely keep that oh, in. But you have to also put in some of the the clips that you took today so yeah, that yeah. people understand where we were at 20 minutes before this. So I posted, sorry, and then... That's okay. What, how long have you been going? Eesh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I posted... No, it's fine. I posted last week's mm-hmm. podcast today. It's actually oh, up cool. right now. And I put little videos of us doing Pilates. Oh, cool. And I put it like in between us. So it usually shows like right here-ish. So I'll do the same thing here. Okay. Um, Here's me dying. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, I'll I'll talk about it. I'll describe it. So um, in my memory of that, I thought I was going to puke for sure. Everything that was going through my mind was it's sitting. It started here. Was that at the very end? Mm, No. (laughs) Oh, like the fifth one when you went and uh, you lied down by the turf? I think uh, it's so round two. Oh. It was sitting here. Yeah, that's not good. But again, it was my positive attitude that kept me afloat. Yes. I kept saying this is good. I was setting the scene as we were on the assault bike. I was picturing myself mountain biking, doing things that this would be helpful for. So it didn't feel like I was hurting myself for nothing. <laughs> and then by round four, it was sitting here, and I was seriously questioning my ability to um keep myself together yeah but you did and you put a garbage can <laughs> near the assault <laughs> bikes, which should have been a red flag <laughs> and i didn't even do that for you that was for <laughs> me that was for me thank you because my I'm head glad. remember what what did you call it you called it something upstairs. it was a sympathy headache i had a sympathy headache for you i was dying yeah so it so next you. week don't you dare drink on wednesday night i'll try don't you dare, I'll because try. then I will have a sympathy headache That's for right. you. That's right. And lifestyle-wise, I think that <laughs> I proved that you can do it all. You really could. Mm-hmm. I was very, like, if there's one thing <laughs> I would personally never do before a workout like this would be drinking the you night You said before. that. Yeah. You said that to me when I came in, yeah. and I wasn't going to expose it to you until we were kind of through it, and then I was going to say, like, huh, by the way, I'm not doing well for these reasons. Yeah. But instead I bring it up before and you said, who, this is the one (laughs) workout you don't want to do under those circumstances. See, That's a bad coach right there. Whatever. I overcame your, the mental block. You did. It is, but I do think for me, and I kept saying this and Anna and I deal with things differently. Anna likes to vocalize her struggle. Whereas I like to vocalize positive thoughts. (laughs) That was put very well. It's like <laughs> Anna likes to whine. <laughs> no, I didn't but you say said, that. I know you did. You <laughs> said it in the most politically correct way. Wow, you got a future in government. Thank you. But yeah. but I, I don't mind that. Yeah, no, you and did Anna, great. And Anna is a positive person. Absolutely. She'll just tell you exactly how she's feeling, and Absolutely. there's nothing wrong with that. No. Um, whereas I will lie to you and me 
and say that I'm doing great. You have a future in politics. To try to feel like it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What is my initiative in the White House? (laughs) Um, Okay. So then when you think of this, Mm -hmm. like, would you want more of this in your training? If so, why? Like, what do you think the benefit to you could have been? I think doing this once a month maybe would be good for me. I don't want to see this every week. Yeah. It's going to get really old really fast. And because I think so much of this is the mental game, it needs to be rare for the novelty to not wear off because then I'm not going to be going 95%. Like, I don't think that I could do the level that we did today for at least a month. Yeah. Because I'm going to get in my own way in my head with, okay, I know how bad this is going to hurt. And that causes really big blocks for people. So that's also why I love that we're trying something new every week. no idea. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Because you're, we're having that, our eye today had that first time experience, which teaches me a lot about myself and how I work through that unknown. Yeah. And what are, because it's your habits and your tendencies mentally and physically that come out when you're challenged or when things are hard. Do you know, do you know what the RPMs were? No, No. I was looking at cows. Okay. Which let's talk about that though, because you said that a point, an important point of this workout was to stay consistent through the six rounds, which we all know makes a workout a lot harder. Yeah. Especially at 95% capacity. Yeah. So you started at 17? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's, but remember, it's do as I say, not as I do. (laughs) I went from like 17 to 12 (laughs) to like 14 (laughs) to 12 to whatever to 13. Like I was all over the map. Yeah. Whereas. I was 12, 12, 12, 12 nine yelled in vain because I was so mad at myself for yeah. dipping down insert 12, clip. 12. Yeah. Insert <laughs> clip, but bleep it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's really, this workout was authentically, you see me at yeah. my raw yeah. self there <laughs> screaming on the assault bike. Oh I, my I w- God. I would have, I would have loved to see what your RPMs were. Um, so w- w- for me, one of the benefits I see for, uh, like a member like yourself would be a lot of the times in terms of pacing, people don't know, as we kind of said, what hard is, what easy is, what, you know, the intermediate is. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, you know, this is hard. So mm-hmm. now when you have another assault bike workout and you need to go on there for a minute and I say, Hey, I want you at like 75%. You can think like, okay, well hard was 12 cals in 20 seconds. So intermediate might be 12 cals in a minute. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, that's a good gauge. Whereas if you had, if you would have seen your RPMs, which is okay, we'll do it again and you can figure it out. Uh, when you see your RPMs, you can be like, all right, a hard RPM that I can only sustain for 20 seconds was 85 RPM. So I know okay. if I'm at 70 RPM, I'm probably not going to stay there for a super long time, right? So it's, it's kind of nice to have those gauges with this type of work as well. But how long does that last for? Because if I am training six days a week, wouldn't I improve? For sure. So shouldn't I not get in my own head with the, this yeah. is what I was able to do last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't I go in kind of? Absolutely. Because as soon as I admit that, oh, I'm not, probably not going to be able to, yeah. I sure as <laughs> shit won't be able to. Yeah. So this is where <laughs> it comes down to. That's to say. It co- sure as shit. I said that, yeah. <laughs> that's where it's like, so even with running, right, yeah. there's pacing, and then there's what I prefer, which is heart rate. Mm. So mm-hmm. ideally, when we're thinking of pacing on the assault bike or anything, what I like to do is when you hit like 170 um, BPM, when you're at like 170, know that your heart rate's going to have a really hard time going back down. Mm. So like if you're doing 10 minutes and you're at 170, chances are you're probably going to burn out pretty quickly. Yeah. So it's always nicer to know heart rate because that's a better um, indicator of your fitness, right? Good. I like that. Yeah. And we were checking in with our, all three of us have our little Apple watches yeah. and we're checking in. So 170 is kind of where you would say. Yeah. Like when you hit 170, you can 
continue to go, mm -hmm. that's fine. But usually when people are around there, it's hard for them to come back down. Yeah. So like if you're doing a really, if you're doing intervals mm -hmm. and you have a minute rest and your heart rate's at 185, that minute rest isn't going to be enough for you to be able to attack that next interval at the same intensity, if that makes sense. Okay. For so the most part. So the five minutes would have helped us as opposed so to the, the four. So the five minutes over the four probably would have been beneficial. Because when we were starting again, I think during the last one, my heart rate was at almost 140. Yeah. Going into the last well, round. Well, we can look at our heart rates afterwards. I sure. bet you, and maybe we'll insert a picture. Yeah. Um, I bet you it'll be <laughs> like, so your heart rate will it'll almost be like climbing stairs. Like your first set, you were going to go low, yeah. and then you probably recovered quickly afterwards, and then you went high, and then you yeah. recovered not as much afterwards. Like that's probably what you'll see throughout. Yeah. Whereas if we're doing, you know, 70% or 60% work, ideally what you want to see is a flat line with your heart rate, yeah. where this is different. Okay. I do like hard things. I yeah. think I'm realizing now that I'm coming down from feeling so terrible. For a minute there upstairs, when I was laying near the stairs, I genuinely was thinking, I really don't feel good. I don't think I like this. Yeah. And I was trying to convince myself, no, this is still fun. Yeah. We're still having fun. This is good. I love being here. This is great. But I haven't felt that bad after. Yeah. So I'm trying to think now, checking in with myself, if this is something that I like or if I'd prefer to not go to the pain cave like that again. But I think I do. So you were talking about marathons. My friend Lauren has trained for marathons. She does the heart rate training. So I've gone out and trained with her nice. a little bit. And she listens to a lot of podcasts from ultra runners, which is an insane mm -hmm. sport. So impressive. And one of the people, I can't remember her name, but she talks, she's one of the best ultra runners in the world. And she talks about going to the pain cave on those runs and she's hallucinating mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I don't know if I would like to get to that level ever, but she talks about, yeah, I just go to the pain cave and that's the place that I go sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we went to the pain cave today. Yeah. And I think it's okay. <laughs> like if you didn't like it, yeah. I think it's actually okay to know things that you don't like. Yeah. Like, I don't like this training. Okay. I know I don't. Okay, I don't like it either. And it doesn't mean <laughs> I will never do it. No. Nope. Right? But, like, you know, I'm like you said, I'm not going to do it every week. I probably wouldn't even do it every month. Um, but I think it's sometimes nice to humble yourself. Yeah. And what I, what I do really like about it is, once again, like, you cannot let the time of a workout dictate your success. Yeah. So we say it, especially to new moms... Um, just because time is super crunched for them, right? Um, if you can't get to the gym for an hour, you don't need to. Like, this was a 30-minute workout. Realistically, it was only two minutes of work, 28 minutes of rest. <laughs> and, like, I right? And once again, we said this last week, too, and I feel bad talking about it because I'm very much, like, against calories on the Apple Watch, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of people live in this world. Yeah. Okay. So we uh, – what was your calories burned in – it was <laughs> 250. Yeah. Okay. So 250. Uh, mine was 284. Oh, sorry. 295. Okay. So active cals 250. Ooh, yeah, total yeah, 295. Was. Average heart rate 135. Range was 91 to 180 beats per minute. Yeah. So same. So total cals 330. Average heart rate 127. Range 84 to 162. And it's like. That was in 30 minutes of this watch on, two minutes of actual work. This is one of the reasons as well, like when we think of this, the Apple Watch, how it dictates how much calories you burn, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, based a lot of, uh, it's based off a lot of what your heart rate is at. Mm -hmm. So because our heart rate was so elevated from hitting this energy system, it's gonna skew it quite a bit. But like, hey, if you're just looking at calories on an Apple Watch, freaking two minutes of work two just destroyed work. us. It really destroyed us. That's an interesting perspective to look at it in as well. Just, you know, what what do you want out of this? Yeah. Do you want quick and dirty? This is the workout for you. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely do it. Also, I think if you want, <laughs> I don't know, for me, the gym as well as a safe place for me, that's why I probably, 
that's probably why I was laugh crying earlier because I don't like that that hurts so much <laughs> mentally and physically. But I think for me, a lot of the times coming into the gym is a place that I come to turn everything else off and work through yeah. whatever life is handing me. And so um, mm. this is a great workout because you can't think about any of your problems. <laughs> you can't think about no. anything else. If you need to get out of your head and into your body, this is the workout for you. Yes, absolutely. And more is not always better. You didn't no. need, if you couldn't do more time and be in that, sit in that, uh, that energy system, you also probably couldn't have done another set. We did six sets. Thank goodness. At the beginning, I danced with the idea of eight. So what if there was seven? Do you think like it would have been like, Bleh. I probably would have puked. Yeah. At seven. Yeah. Definitely at eight. Yeah. Probably at seven, definitely at eight. Yeah. And then you ambulance would. at nine. <laughs> I was going to say that you would have died at nine. <laughs> then, yeah. yeah. Time of death. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm, gl I'm glad we did this one. Me too. To, uh, Thanks I'm, for that. That was fun. I'm, I'm sad we, g we got it out of the way so early on. Yeah. Maybe there is another one that's similar to this that we can do. Okay. Don't tell me about it. I, I want to be surprised. It, you'll, yeah. Like it, I was today. It'll feel, it won't be as pukey. Mm -hmm. It might be as pukey. We'll get okay. there. But I like that we did this because now we can compare future yes. workouts yeah. to this and give our thoughts on what purpose each type of movement serves. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad we had the conversation as well about what you think is the best approach to mm -hmm. fitness in life in general. And I'm excited because now I'm not that scared to walk back into a CrossFit gym where historically I have been hurt. Yeah. See, no, no. Bring it CrossFit. And that will happen. Watch soon, me soon. I'm sure. I can't wait. Yeah. So this was fun. Uh, anything else before we wrap up? No, we're right on time. Right on time. It's seriously three minutes until you got to walk out the door. This has been a roller coaster. I just want to acknowledge that. <laughs> it's been quite the roller coaster. But I'm glad that we also did the podcast right after it happened, like right after it happened yeah. so that you could see me arguably at the, my questionable list. <laughs> <laughs> not going to say worst. I was going to say, you didn't want to say worst. Nope. I didn't want to say worst, yeah. but uh, the footage will show you yeah. that I am not bulletproof. Yeah. That was humbling. Yeah. No, you did a great job. Thank job you. You today. did a great job. Yeah, thank Thanks you. for, you know, being so fun, pushing me to <sighs> my limits. And uh, thanks for dragging. Uh, thanks to Anna as well for joining us. Yes. She's so fun. Yes. You, you get to see a range of yes. mental approach You games. get to see like, this is fun. And like, <laughs> I hate life. Yeah. yeah. It's great. And then where are you? We didn't talk about you. I was in between. Yeah. I was like, yay. Yeah. Yeah. I could tell you were suffering. <laughs> I was more excited about, it's bad. Like, I don't like to be the coach that's like, oh, I want to bury people. Because that's not it at all. <laughs> I want to bury yeah, people. Yeah. That is not my approach. <laughs> but what I do like is when people learn new things. Yeah. When like Anna's like, oh, 20 seconds isn't going to be hard. I'm like, I am so excited for you mm -hmm. to change your tune, right? Just so you change can appreciate your perspective it. Too. Exactly. So that's more, yeah. I, I was just like, yes, it's working. They're going to get yes. it. Yes. And the reason why a coach is so important, and I brought this up because Brooke came and pushed me this week, and it yep. was a good reminder of why I love having a coach, is that when you get stagnant, it's great to have somebody who believes in you to come and say, hey, try this really hard thing. I know you can do it. And then you do it and you feel really good after. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I'll feel good later today. I hope. Oh my gosh. So you and I, I'm just going to say this and then we're going to end it. Okay. In my family, we always talk about this concept of the Portuguese goodbye because <laughs> both of my parents are born in Portugal. So oh, we whatever. can't end it. That's Where it's like, saying. so what happens is, so people are like, okay, what, we're going to see that. Okay. Okay. Bye. So they're like, in the kitchen because everything always ends up in the kitchen right yeah and then they like walk in the front door to the front door and they're like oh yeah oh yeah okay blah, 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 blah. and they ta start talking again yeah and then they open the front door and then they're talking on like the front stoop and then they're like talking outside their car like it's like this whole process that's I like us it. every episode I know. as i'm editing i'm like oh yeah okay i'm gonna end the clip here and they're like oh one more thing <laughs> it is Kay. classic it's portuguese goodbye then cut it off nothing else yeah but you got to tell the subscribe stuff we're not going to go the back and forth it was so cringy watching <laughs> it. I'm like, I hate everything about us right That's now. That's the point to I be know, cringy. I know. It's cringy if I do it on my own too, but I will say it. Like, 
comment and smash that <laughs> subscribe button. That was the worst one I've ever done. Yeah, no, that's good. It's good. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Bye. See you later. <laughs>